So I was working with this group of administrators, superintendents, board trustees recently. And one of the things that I said to them that I truly believe is everything great that you want happening in your district is already there. You just need to find a way to unleash it, to share those stories that people don't even know that are already happening in your district and make that great learning go viral. And as I was going through that process, I met a superintendent named Lebon Dean, and he actually really kind of embraced this idea. And immediately after that conference, he went out and he started sharing these incredible stories of his district, his staff, his students, former students. And what's really been amazing is really how he's been showing his learning, his growth, and trying to embrace his own learning. Uh, another thing I said on that day, especially to, since as a group of administrators, do not come to this session and then go back to your people and say, here's a bunch of things that you're going to do. The first thing you should be able to say is here is what I'm going to do. Here's how I'm going to improve my learning and to really learn, not just lead, but learn by example. And Lamont does such a beautiful modeling of this it's absolutely incredible to see and i just really love that we've connected i love this podcast and i know you're going to really enjoy it so while you're here if you could hit that like button press subscribe to youtube it really helps us grow this channel and share the incredible stories of people like lamont and people like the incredible staff students and community of chapel hill isd i'm really proud to have connected with lamont i know you're gonna love his story welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed today to have my, my I like to call you my friend because I feel we've connected very, very well. That's me. Uh, uh, yeah, over the last little while. Uh, Lamont Dean is actually the superintendent in Chapel Hill ISD. It, it's a smaller area in uh, East Texas, you know, based on what you told me. And I, I've actually been to uh, Tyler ISD before and just a wonderful group. And um, I know Lamont grew up there. Uh, he, he went away for a little bit, came back. And I actually met Lamont recently at, at a workshop that I was leading. And he was such an incredible um, it, it's funny, like I want to say leader, but I, I, I actually would say learner first that was, you know, you're like, you know, that term leading by example, I love that you were learning by example. I think that to me is kind of the crux of leadership and you do such a great job. So Lamont is actually, uh, you know, uh, has been a teacher. He's been a principal. He's superintendent. He's a football player as well. And we were talking about, we were talking about coaching. And I remember when I first became a, uh, a teacher my i was hired for a job and they're like i kind of have a feeling you you're more interested in coaching than teaching i'm like yeah that's probably <laughs> right so I thought that was pretty connected but uh lamont is absolutely incredible so lamont if you could just tell everyone a little bit about who you are what you do today and how you got there that's a great place to start absolutely well again as george spoke my name is lamont dean i'm superintendent of Chapel Hill ISD in Tyler, Texas. Uh, you know, I've just finished my five year anniversary of being a superintendent and I'm blessed to, to be able to serve this district in this capacity that I currently serve, which is ironic to uh, that story. This is also the same district that I grew up in. I was a student in this district. I went uh, through all my years, K through 12 uh, of uh, high and finished high school here and uh, was blessed to have some journeys of going to a local uh, junior college, Tyler Junior College, which I always like to give a shout out to the Apaches. Uh, and then after I played a couple of years there in Tyler Junior College, I went off to Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky, uh, which uh, is a, a rural um, community in Kentucky that I got a chance to go and, and finish my playing career, but also uh, my educational endeavors uh, finished um, uh, there uh, as a student athlete and uh, got into coaching and uh, started in the local high school, Callaway County. I like to give shout outs to all these individual schools because they molded me. Uh, I had some great people in uh, Callaway County High School in that school district uh, gave me opportunities, opened up doors that I didn't even think that I uh, desired to, to open up. You know, I always feel like that uh, God has a place. Uh, he has a, he's wrote the book for us. And, and so uh, I didn't go back 
to when I was at Tyler Junior College, my goal was to be a architect. Uh, my grandfather built homes. Uh, I had a mentor in, in uh, the school system that was impactful to me. Uh, but my journey ended up in education and, and there is no better place for me uh, to be in education, to impact the lives, to be able to give back uh, to those individuals that uh, helped mold me over the years. Uh, got a chance to come home from Callaway County. I went, came uh, to uh, Lindale uh, ISD in Lindale, Texas uh, in about 1999, I believe it was. Um, spent five years there teaching and coaching. Uh, met some outstanding people. A lot of those I'm still connected to to this day. Uh, got into administration when I left there. Uh, the mentor I had there well, gave uh, me some great advice and, and knowing that I can still be impactive, impactful to students, even though I'm not a, a coach. Uh, you can do it in the administration world as, as well. And so got involved in uh, administration and then I got a call one, one uh, evening. Uh, I was actually, George, I didn't tell you this, but I was actually getting ready to get out of administration. I told you I had a passion for teaching and coaching. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, working with a local school district <clears throat> and uh, they actually offered me a job. And, and I called my wife uh, on the way back uh, to our, uh, our current uh, place uh, that we lived in. And uh, I was telling her, hey, I accepted the job. We're going to kind of get closer to Tyler, get closer to home. Got a phone call from Chapel Hill ISD. And uh, they identify, hey, we heard that you may be someone we want to talk to about a uh, principal job. Uh, I told them, no, I'm not the one. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm getting out of administration. You may want to call somebody else. And they said, no, we, we really would just like to sit down and talk to you. So uh, long story short, uh, it ended up working out. We had good conversations and they gave me an opportunity to become a principal um, surrounded again by a lot of people. And, and this, you know, being the leader of a campus is where, man, I found my niche. I found I found my passion. I found my love and joy. And, and man, it just exploded inside of me. And uh, so I've been doing work in administration and uh, took a couple of different roles uh, in uh, our district, as well as um, a couple of different stints as a super, uh, excuse me, a principal. Um, last role before being a principal, a superintendent, excuse me, was a deputy superintendent in our district. I did that for about two and a half years and um, through a retirement, had an opportunity to step into this role. And and uh, for the last five years, I've been serving the children in the, in the staff and community of Chapel Hill ISD. You know, like, so I'm, li I'm listening to this story and there's, there's a parallel uh, a little bit on my leadership journey. And it made me really kind of think of something because I had no interest in ever going into admin. That was not something I wanted to do. And somebody saw that in me and I didn't realize it. And then when I started doing it, I'm like, oh, like this, this feels right. This, this really connects. And I was, and maybe this is going to sound bad. I think sometimes when people are like right away, they want to go into admin. I think sometimes it's a wrong job because they're looking more at the power side of it as opposed to the servant side of it. You know what I mean? So that's that was never of interest to me. It was like they just saw that you know I loved uh, you know didn't matter what grade I taught. I talked to every student. I would go out of my way, supervision, things like that. And like these are things I didn't realize that benefited me as an administrator until I became one. Right. And so that, I just, I just love that. Uh, and it really pushed my thinking what you just said, because I'm like, how come a lot of administrators that are really, really good had no interest in ever going into administration. Right. And it's, it is right. kind of, it is kind of weird. Now, one of the things that I really loved is you're in a smaller area of texas uh, to be honest yeah, i never heard of chapel hill other than the north carolina version of it i didn't know there's a chapel hill texas and i've been following um and you've been really like sharing incredible stuff you've been sharing your educators you've been sharing your students and you're doing some very forward-thinking things the thing that i'm really curious about is you're in this area that you grew up in you came back to i guarantee there's lots of people who grew up there came back to and that a lot of times the reason why people come back is because they liked how it was. They don't want things to change. They don't, they actually want to hold on to what always was, but you are moving this district forward. Well, and I don't want to say you, because I know you, you're going to correct me right away. Cause you're going to say it's everybody else, right? Else, that's exactly right. I knew you're going to correct me. So I, I fixed it before. Right. So that you, you're helping to really empower the, the people you serve to do incredible things. So like, what, what do you find is a, um, 
you know, cause this is a question I, I get all the time. Well, how, how have you in a smaller community that, you know, probably has a lot of people that grew up in it coming back. How have you seen to help people move forward, to try different things, to go out um, and do things different than the way that they were taught in their school experience? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the important thing, and you hit the nail on the head here in our rural East Texas area, you know, surrounded by pine trees. As I glance up at the uh, my office window here and, and we got lakes and we got kind of easy, soft living. And, and most people, as you mentioned, either come back home or move to this area because this is where they want to be. And uh, but, you know, one of the things that we always do and I encourage our staff and our team to do when we make uh, initiatives or uh, we look for innovation uh, we always start with why, you know, why are we doing what we're doing? And a lot of that has to do with our mission in our district is that we want to educate children so that they can successfully compete in an ever changing world. And this world is changing every single day. I led with a story uh, to a church congregation just the other day uh, and I spoke to them about uh, I had one of my uh, coaches on our team and, and on Twitter. I followed them a lot. And um, he sent a message when our team, I think they had left the powerlifting meet and went to a local restaurant in the area, wherever they were. And uh, there was a, a robot that would there was a waiter or waitress. It wasn't a waiter or waitress. It was actually a robot. He sent a video. And, uh, you know, you talk about an ever changing world. I challenge people to think about, you know, the the jobs that we used to rely on where children can go be a, a cashier cashier at a, a local restaurant or a grocery store is no longer because you go in, there's more self-check lines right. than there are you know, humans that are checking lines. So the world is evolving and things are changing. So we start with the innovation uh, of our conversation about why. Why do we need this change? And it starts to hopefully resonate and make sense to them while we're trying to move our district forward. And so as we start with our why and we identify our mission, we then work on, you know, the executing the innovation that we create that we feel like we want to create. We want to give our children a head start in life. We want to expose them uh, to their passions and, and what they're really good at. Those are the two things. The reason why maybe I ended up in the chair that I'm ended up right now is that I'm passionate about people. I love people and um, I'm passionate uh, about uh, education. And, and I think maybe if I'm good at anything, I'm good at making connections. Um, if I'm passionate about anything, it's about giving people opportunity. Like many of people before me gave me an opportunity. I want to pay it forward. And so this is a great opportunity for me to do so by connecting those two things, by starting with our why and uh, making sure that the innovation that we create in our district is living the mission that we have for us. Well, and that's that's actually how like I felt so connected to you right away and so drawn, um, you know, on that day to you. And I could I could tell, first of all, what you said is how passionate you are people. And I don't like I don't know if I could say that I could tell how passionate you were about education, but I could 100 percent tell how passionate you were about learning that that you do know what I mean. And yeah. that, as a superintendent, um, that really sets the tone for everybody else because if the superintendent is growing and pushing themselves and doing incredible things, then there's no reason for us to stay, you know, doing the same things that we are doing as a teacher or a principal or, you know, a custodian or admin staff, anybody. So I found that really fascinating. And um, during that workshop, we were one of the things I said, and you have proved so well is that everything amazing that you want to happen in your district is already there. You just have to highlight it. You just have to bring it out and make it go viral. And so I actually pulled you up and asked you to share your learning with everybody. And then I said, okay, now we're going to do it on Twitter and heads up. I got like 270,000 followers. So a lot of people are going to see this. And you were like, uh, you were, uh, you were pretty good. You were like, <laughs> It's like you had a you know some uh, TV experience when you did it. You nailed it, and I didn't record it by accident. I was like had it, and I was looking in the middle, and I was like, oh, I didn't press the record button. And so you did this, and what what has been really amazing is since that day, you've been popping up on my feed. These and I I don't want to say just you, your school district through you, your kids, your staff. And this I don't I never said this to you before. Basically, there's two people who pop up in my home feed. It's you and Elon Musk. And, that's <laughs> it. and I don't follow Elon Musk or I, maybe I don't. I don't know. But it's like kind of funny because it's like it's, it's something from your district. 
And we were talking about this before, you know, kind of how I put you in that video. And then you shared a story with me and I, I would love for you to share it about um, someone who you talked to recently that you encouraged to do the same thing. Can you share that with us? Because I thought that was really, really powerful. Absolutely. Well, first of all, <clears throat> going back to that day, it was, uh, man, you hit so many, we call them golden nuggets in our district. Just so many things that re resonated with me. And uh, man, when I start to think about and hear you say that, you know, you don't have to reinvent who you are, what you're doing is already there. You just got to tell your story. And man, that just hit, that's just weighed on me and weighed on me. And so we immediately start to think about, hey, how can I to tell the story. It was very unique. It was over the weekend and we had our weekly uh, leadership meeting. And uh, so what we typically do is we'll go out like it's pretty traditional. We'll visit our campuses and we come back and we do a series called Grows and Glows. Uh, we don't like to say, hey, what's bad about your uh, your campus. We like to say, hey, an opportunity for us to grow. And then things that we start with are glows. And so <clears throat> we decided that to do a little bit different than coming back and do it the old antiquated Dewey Decimal System way of just preaching out to what people saw is that I challenged them to uh, take this video approach and we're going to you sit it through uh, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, whichever you had. And so I'm going to model this. And so I modeled exactly what you did to me. I asked anybody who would like to, to do this. I had a, a taker, my um, special ed director. She said, I'll do it. She came up. I asked her the question um, and I told her that, uh, you know, I'm going to record it. So I let her practice. Then after that, we recorded it. And then uh, we, uh, we we videoed that and I shot it out to Twitter and I, I tag you on it. Uh, well, tagging you on it, I'm sure was the uh, the the indig instigator. But you know, we had over 10,000 hits uh, by the end of the day. Oh, on, that's awesome! On, on that particular video, and so we went back and we used that mantra, recreated our hashtag Chapel Hill ISD, and uh, so we went around that day, and all these administrators, probably 40 or so of them in the room, are infiltrating all of our campuses, and our goal was to record. Uh, what they saw that was great on our campuses and hashtag Chapel Hill ISD. And it just went uh, that one day. It was amazing the impact Absolutely. it had throughout. And so we also do a deal that we call uh, Feel Good Friday. We like to always uh, communicate with our people. And we talk about relationships matter and making sure that people uh, you, you're able to tell your story with some things that you saw in that person. So now we challenge them to use that same videographer. Or that videography method and tag the person that you want to compliment or highlight on a feel good Friday. So that has been something that has blown up. So most recently, um, we I went to a uh, one of our community churches and uh, got a chance to go and visit them as we try to do with a uh, organization we call Friends of Faith. We connect many of our churches in our local area together to be a partner um, in education with our local school district. And so one of the friends of faith pastors, Pastor um, Randall McDonald. So we definitely want to give a shout out to him and thank him for his uh, invitation. So I got a chance to go and visit and uh, I ran into a former student uh, who was a student when I was actually the high school principal on the Chapel Hill High School campus. And uh, he was talking and we you know, gave pleasantries and hugged. And uh, he told me, thank you for coming today. And he said, hey, Mr. Dean, would you do me a favor? I said, sure, what is it? He said, when you go back on campus uh, next week, would you go and tell Aaron Steele, uh, who is a history teacher in our district? Uh, man, just tell him I said, hi, thank you so much for uh, what he did for me as a student. And I said, hey, you wanna tell him yourself? And he said, sure. And I told him exactly what I was going to do. Here we are in the foyer of the church. And uh, we're sitting here talking. I said, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this and I'm going to put it on my Twitter. You're OK with that? He said, absolutely. I am. Oh, so awesome. I asked him the question. I said, hey, I'm here with a former student. He want to give a, a shout out to one of his former teachers. And he gave a man. He gave a chilling testimony, a chilling testimony about how impactful Coach Steele was for him. And uh, at the end, of course, I pushed it out on on the. Um, on my Twitter. But what I also did was I sent that to Aaron Steele um, and actually he didn't have his number in my phone. I sent it to his wife and said, hey, make sure you get that to Aaron. And, you know, just the power of encouragement. We're talking about encouragement, motivation. Right. People today, especially teachers who feel overwhelmed, uh, maybe don't feel like that their work that they're doing is worthwhile uh, to be able to get that type of statement from a student. As right. 
we would say from the mouth of babes, to be able to encourage him and others who see it to continue to do in the work uh, that we all signed up to do to help impact children and change lives. Man, that was powerful to me, but it also showed me that nugget that I was able to get from you at that session and how that has really impacted my leadership in such a short time. So uh, for that, I thank you. Well, they, you know, the, as you're, as you're telling this story, um, about this, the the whole premise, uh, and I don't know if you've you've read uh, because of a teacher. We wrote because of a teacher, because of exactly what you talked about is that so many teachers have had this tremendous impact on so many kids, but they rarely know about it. They and they they, I guess innately know they've done it, but they don't necessarily hear from the kids they served. So we wanted to make sure that we were you know honoring teachers from our past that have had a tremendous impact. On, on so many other people. And there, there's two things I want to share that really kind of struck me as you're talking. As soon as I saw you do that post, you tag me, I was so excited about it. I started digging through your Twitter. Yeah. So I don't just see you highlighting the adults. Then I see you with kids. Then I'm like seeing you do this stuff over and over again. And what's really kind of cool about this in education. And I, I, I truly believe um, in my first 10, 15 years of education, um, we have grown way more in the last five. And my belief is because, because of the access that we have to one another. So I took your stuff, I blogged about it, highlighted it. A bunch of people see my blog um, of your work and then they're like, I'm going to start doing this. And so it's not just that it really makes a difference in Chapel Hill. It then starts to spread out through education and you were talking about this earlier we want to help kids no matter what school district they're in right and so you highlight this too now i know you're a sports guy um and i know you're you're a football so i ref basketball and i i always think about basketball stories uh when i'm refing and there is there is something that really resonated and i thought about is that i did something with you that day and immediately you're like okay well, let's see let's see what this does right you yeah. like when you dump you jumped in so i was re- i was refing pretty high level basketball and w- people don't know the behind the scenes so basically you ref a half but there's someone in there's like a evaluator who's watching you in the audience right and you don't know where they're at so you go into the locker room and when you go into the locker room you got like 10 minutes they don't they don't give you like they don't give you positive compliments. Yeah. They are hammering you for 10 minutes. And it's not because they don't see anything good. They just they don't have time. They it's like you got such a short time. So like you need to try this, try this, fix this, fix this. And the referees that actually do the best are the ones who took the insights from the evaluation at halftime and implemented and tried them in the second half. They didn't say, let me think about it. Let me ponder on this for a little while. And it doesn't mean they use them for the rest of their life, but like when, if they were seen trying it, that actually put you way up in the evaluator's eyes. And that was what I thought about is that it was really how important it was to you to learn quickly, to see where it goes. And you have done different things. And even I said that day already, which is kind of cool because you immersed yourself in your learning, which I think is a, a really Um, important aspect. Now there's, there's one question I'm thinking about as you, as you're talking, because both you and I can totally have this agreement that is really important that we continue to grow and learn as educators. And there's, there's, it's going to be a ever changing world. Is there like a, what, like, how do you see as like, kind of like an, an, an end goal? Like, how do we know we've ever arrived if it's constantly changing? Like how, what is that from the viewpoint of a superintendent? Like, how do you know you've gotten to a place where, or, or can we get to a place? Like, what does that look like? Because I think a lot of times it's like, we think we're just going to get to a place and we're like, we're done. We did it. But right. what, what, how does that look? Like what, when I ask you that, what, how, what do you think about when I share that with you? Well, when you originally asked the question, I start to think to myself, I wanted to challenge that question because I yeah. don't know if you ever arrive. I think if you uh, feel like you, uh, you know, the, the journey, the success is not a destination. It is mm-hmm. a journey. And I think as we continue to improve and see that we're increasing capacity amongst the leaders uh, that my job is to impact, which we like to identify that my job is to build better principles. 
uh, to build better leaders. Uh, my central office job, the principal's job is to build better teachers. The teacher's job is to impact students. And when you think about it that way, we can always get better because the world is going to ever, ever evolve. You know, it's going to always change and we're going to continue to raise the bar. You know, years ago, we didn't have, uh, you know, we used to have people that would come out and pump your gas for you. Then we had to identify that, well, we figure out how to pump our own gas and now we figure out how to use a credit card. Now, uh, I saw a video from a place uh, over uh, overseas that has an automated uh, pumper. You just pull up and it takes off your gas cap and it puts the, the gas in there and and you wow. pay it all online. You stay in your car. And so the world is constantly evolving. So I think that what we're looking to do to to impact children so that they can successfully compete in this ever changing world, there's no destination. There is a, a just a it's a journey. And so as we continue to evolve our leadership capacity, how we as leaders, we have to constantly refine our skills, uh, much like I felt like I did on that particular day there with you. I have to constantly look at ways that we can improve so we can impact those people that we serve. And so I look at it as it constantly every single day. Being a former athlete, I, I, would, I tell my staff, honestly, I hate to lose more than I really want to win. Uh, win winning is not my end goal. I just don't want to lose. Uh, I told him years ago, I have a, my oldest son is is uh, is 28 years old. And um, what I have explained to some is when he got old enough to beat me in basketball. I stopped. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't the fact that uh, I just didn't want to lose. I couldn't stomach the fact. So I'm like 1200 and oh against my uh, my. <laughs> my uh, 28 year old son, but I stopped playing him when he got 13. So uh, that the rest of the story may not matter, but at the same time. So to answer that question, I think it's just about the journey. It's about constantly evolving, constantly seeking and being thirsty to learn and grow. Uh, and I think any leader who feels like they have arrived, then maybe they're not the leader that they really thought that they were. Yeah, I, I love that. You know, so I, I think they're so I've worked with tons of districts over my lifetime. And the ones that I find are the most um, forward on their journey, the most forward thinking and do the most incredible things are the ones that are never really satisfied. They're always asking questions, how to figure out how to get better. And the ones that are the furthest behind are the ones that think they're there. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And that, that's it. And what I love about um, kind of your, your, you are though striking a balance. And what I mean by that is, you, you acknowledge and embody the focus on continuous learning and growth, but you also are really taking um, the opportunity to highlight the great stuff that's already happening. Because I think there can be a point where we're like acting like we're, we never are doing good things, right? Like, and you have to, you have to do both, right? Like stop and, and appreciate how far you've gone, but no, there's further to go. And I think you're, you're striking that balance. So you, you know, for Chapel Hill ISD, all of this growth, what is, what is the hope for every single kid that graduate from your schools? What, what is that, that true hope and vision that you as a school community have? You know, our goal is to ensure that our children understand the the destination that they want to go to ensure that they have a successful career path. Uh, our job is more than just a high school diploma. We we uh, that is a byproduct of the work that we're doing. We want our children to have a goal, destiny and understand how to get there. That's the most important thing. It's one thing to want to be a nurse. The other thing is knowing how to get there. The things that I need to do to get there to be a nurse. We want to connect students with their passion. We also want to connect children with what they're good at. Uh, and those two things will give them an identification of what career options that they will be happy with. We teach our kids that a career is we wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning, man, I'm excited to come in because I get to try to be better today than I was yesterday. And I truly believe that that's my drive. Uh, but I do it because I have a career. I have something that I'm passionate about that I feel like I'm semi good at. That's for somebody else to evaluate, not me. Um, but I love it because it's my career. I don't want a job where I have to go and, and clock in and I dread being there because I got to make ends meet, right? So we want our kids to have a career, no matter what that career is. But we also want to give you a roadmap on how to get there. So when our children leave Chapel Hill ISD, they will have purpose, they will have vision, 
They will have an understanding of what their passions are, what they're good at. And most important, they have a large group of highly dedicated individuals. It doesn't matter who those were, because we we understand and believe it takes a village to raise these children. It's my my cafeteria workers that feed them wonderful, nutritious meals every day. Those bus drivers, they got the smiling faces. We challenge them. You know, they're the first person that, that you know, 80 percent of our kids who ride a bus. Uh, you're the first person they see in the morning and you're the last person they see in the afternoon. So don't think your role in, in this organization doesn't matter. It's about our, our aids uh, that provide so many different resources, our receptionists, how important it is to have that. You know, I was told at a, a long time ago that when that person answered the phone, you know what kind of day they're having, you know, if they're smiling and if they're not, right. so, you know, how, uh, you know, you know, high quality customer service is fanatical customer service is what we call it is what we want from everybody in our organization. Everybody in our organization has a role that's going to impact the children that we serve in our community. And so for that, when children leave our district, they will have all those tools because they have passionate, dedicated staff members that will help them reach their goals. That's amazing. You know, I phoned a school district the other day and they, you reminded me of it. I called them and they said, it's a wonderful day at, and then they said that. And I was like, (laughs) <laughs> I was like a little thrown off. And I said, that is such a wonderful way to, a- to answer the phone. Like it kind of threw me off. It just, you know, just cause that's, that's different. And I, and I appreciate that enthusiasm. The, the thing that I've said for the longest of times, and I know this is probably why we connect is that I don't want our kids to walk out of our schools where every kid is good at the same thing. I want every kid to walk out being good at something. Amen. And that could be something different for, Everyone, Lamont, this is uh, we connected, but you're not getting rid of me, man. So <laughs> I, I'm telling you. So if you are listening to this podcast right now, make sure you connect with Lamont. He is just doing some incredible work um, with his staff. He, he is highlighting and he is such a model um, to what great leadership is. And I, I just feel really blessed that um, I pulled you aside that day and we've connected since. And I I, I look forward to continued conversations. Um just kind of seeing the stuff that's happening in your district. I, I like, I, I, I know I don't know your district or you that well, but I just feel so proud, which is that is a embodiment of, of your team and your school district and you. So thank you so much for taking the time to be on here today. Hey man, thank you for having me. And I was blessed to be connected with you since the day that we met back then a couple of weeks in ago. And uh, we hope that we stay connected and, yeah. and continue you're to send stuck. it back in Chapel Hill. You're, you're stuck with me, man. That's it. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.